mad. Ooh. Good morning. How y'all doing today? I'm trying to see who has questions about this student loan, this Navient settlement. Let me know if you guys got questions this morning. Want to see if y'all got questions this morning about the Navient suit. Let's talk the Navient lawsuit. Let's definitely do that. Yes, yes. Good morning. Just want to see who has questions about this Navient lawsuit that is going on. Hey, good morning. We are checking in on the Navient lawsuit this morning. See if y'all got questions about it. Is your school on the list to get your loans taken care of? That is what we want to know today. Do you have questions about your borrower's forgiveness form? I know a lot of people were asking so I wanted to see if you guys have questions. Good morning. Happy Saturday. So, hey, y'all. Who got questions for the Navient lawsuit? Are you guys included in the Navient lawsuit? Is your school closed down? Let's talk about it. We definitely want to see who has questions we're getting things done for the navient are you ready to get your 260 dollars it's saturday morning i know y'all woke okay we just got some of the best news we didn't got in a long time student loans navient got sued are you going to get some money are you going to get your loans wiped out I'm excited for some of y'all. Hey, y'all. So nobody don't have Navient. Nobody has Navient as their student loans. I know some of y'all got questions. I know some of y'all got some questions. Y'all trying to figure out how to get these loans taken away. But let's talk to these student loans. Because it's a lot to put out. So if y'all got questions, I'm going to answer them for y'all this morning. Because I know a lot of y'all went to Navient. I know a lot of y'all went to college and Navient um, managed your student loans. So if Navient meant, okay, thank mm -hmm. you, Jonice. About time somebody responded, okay? I'm just trying to see what questions y'all got. Did y'all check out my video that y'all see the schools that are included in the lawsuit? Okay, Paula. Well... If y'all haven't heard, Navient got sued and a bunch of schools got sued along with them. And if you attended any of the schools that are on the list, then you can put in for the borrower's defense and get your loans forgiven, canceled, wiped off just because Navient ass is guilty. Okay, okay, Brown Mackey. Okay, thank you. Check out that video. Because I'm telling you, it's a lot of y'all going to um, see it and not do anything about it. This is not just for y'all to do um, for yourselves. Check your aunts, your grandparents. I have individuals that are in their 60s and attended some of these schools. And it is time to get those wiped off of your credit reports. Okay, get them wiped out of the system. So if you went to a school and you received a private student loan, 
through Navient. Navient will refund you any money that you paid. Okay, so they're going to refund you if you have a private loan. If you have a federal loan, Liberty University, I did not see Liberty University. You got to spell out what ATI is. There are a lot of the technical institutes. There are a lot of the beauty schools. There are a lot of nursing schools. There are even schools like University of Phoenix. I was actually very surprised to see University of Phoenix on there. But I contacted individuals I know that went to University of Phoenix and their student loans are already wiped off. I did not see Missouri College. Yes, Everest is on there. Everest bought up a lot of old schools. Lane College, you might have to check. Lane College, I believe, was bought by somebody else. Um, and now um, it could be forgiven. How are they deciding? So they are deciding what loans are going to be forgiven by this lawsuit. Um, well, it's a couple things. So as far as the Navient goes, your loans are going to be identified by the campus of the school you went to. For example, if you went to South University, they still have some campuses open. So certain campuses that are closed, you will get your money back or you will get your loans wiped off. So if your school closed down, meaning if you go online right now and you find no history of your school other than an address where it used to be, you're probably going to be in the list. Um, if your school has certain campuses that have closed down, you will probably be on the list, but nobody will know for sure until um, July. But I actually read the case where the Consumer Finance Bureau actually brought charges against Navient and they outlined schools that were working in conjunction with Navient and um, Navient was steering you guys away from getting on payment plans to lower your um, student loan payments. So the government is mad about that. And so now they're saying that Navient has to cancel loans from all those schools that you guys went to. All right, Concord Career Institute. I believe Concord is on there. Virginia, Virginia Tech, Virginia College, not Virginia Tech, excuse me. Virginia College is definitely on the list. Um, just so you guys know, I do offer application assistance. It is a 26 page application and it is very intimidating. Okay. Um, but at the end of the day, the name of the game is getting those student loans taken away. A lot of y'all are still going to have student loans reporting because y'all are going to wait for somebody else to do it for you. Do not wait on the government to identify your loan and cancel it. You identify your own damn loan and let them know. Independence University, somebody asked me about that, and I don't remember seeing that school. But see if it was bought by somebody else, because a lot of these schools are bought by other schools, and they change their names, especially Corinthian colleges. The people who have IT, ITT, Everest, they bought up a lot of old schools. Florida Metropolitan University. Um, if anybody ever went to Baker College, that's not on the list, but that is another school. There are a lot of schools that are not on that are not included in the Navient lawsuit that are still eligible for borrower's defense. So um, drop your school name. I've, I've looked at so many. I should be able to tell you if I've seen it or not. OK, uh, uh, and my loans have disappeared, but I wasn't sure if it was just frozen. If your loans have disappeared. So this is a good thing. If the, your loans, your student loans have disappeared, you may have already been identified as someone that has a canceled loan or you could be. Um, you could fall into one of the other categories. People are disabled and they are finding out that their loans are being automatically canceled without them doing anything. So if your loans are gone, good. If you don't care for the reason why, don't ask. But um, yes, loans should be coming off. All right, Sally Mae. Sally Mae used to own Navient. I don't know, a lot of y'all may not know that, but Navient was Sally Mae eight years ago. And Navient, excuse me, and Sally Mae got sued for the same thing. Yes, Virginia College is on the list. Sally Mae got sued for the same thing Navient got sued for. And then they created Navient and then they did the same shit again. So um, if you have Sally Mae loans, you may, it doesn't hurt to dispute, but if you have Sally Mae loans or you went to a school that used them, please do, um, please uh, put in for your borrower's fence. Kaiser University is not on there. ECPI is on there. 
Art Institute in New York City is definitely on that, sis. All the art institutes are closed. So definitely put in for your um, borrower's defense. The Barbara Scotia College, I have seen that before for borrower's defense. Put in your application, too, because I believe that school is not open. Macon State, no, I have not seen that. I have also not seen Purdue. Um, Brown Mackey College, somebody keeps asking about Brown Mackey, but Brown Mackey is on the list. Borrower's defense is just a um, argument that you are making to the Department of Education saying, hey, um, this school used deceptive practices. They lied. They they tricked me. They said that I was going to be able to get a job. Whatever your reason is, if you're not happy with uh, with what you ended up with, if you got a degree you can't get a job for, if you went to school and got a certification and now you can't get a job, you can take up borrower's defense. There are some people who actually got it even though the school is still open, okay? Um, but that's what borrower's defense is. It's basically you, you saying, hey, this is the reason why I feel like I um, should have my loans wiped off because I was misled. Now, um, before some of y'all ask, yes, Brown Mackey is on the list. Um, University of Texas, absolutely not. Kaplan is definitely on the list. Pittsburgh, Washington, Jefferson, I don't know. College of New Rochelle, I have not seen it. Um, Remington on the list. Uh, good question. You can find the list at a website called NavientSettlement.com. Uh, TikTok does not allow me to post links, so I don't even try. Um, uh, but they have a list there. That is the longest list I've seen so far, but you guys know I do a lot of research. So, um, I found other schools that are not on the list that still, um, are quali you know, that qualify for borrower's defense. So, um, you guys definitely can get your loans wiped. Okay. No reason not to. Okay. Let's see. Catherine Gibbs. Some, oh, maybe you're texting somebody. Mercy College. I have not seen Mercy College. Everest is on the list. If you have a loan with Great Lakes, it doesn't matter who you had the loan with. It matters of the school. So what school you went to. Just because Navient did your loans doesn't mean you're going to get um, anything from the settlement. It is based off of the school that you went to as well. So Navient will be giving anyone whose loans are forgiven and they get, they get federal loans. You get $260. Not a lot. And yes, I'm rolling my um, weed this morning, okay? Um, but you will get your $260 from Navient if you have a federal loan. Strayer is not on the list, but some some um, locations of Strayer have been um, uh, sued and some people have gotten their money back on the borrower's defense for Strayer. But Strayer is open, so it could be hard. If you went to three of the schools on the list, then you need to not wait one more second, sis, and get that application for borrower's defense. It is 26 pages. Get it and send that in, okay? It is, like I said, the application is very intimidating. I do offer um, application assistance if someone needs it, but you definitely uh, should definitely um, do it. Another thing, guys, if you guys have Pioneer Credit on your credit reports, then you also need to go and dispute. That's another thing that came out of the lawsuit. They found that Navient was illegally reporting information that was not true. They were reporting information that was inaccurate and it was messing up y'all credit. So they say to check your credit reports. And if your student loans were ever sent to collections and the, co and the company was Pioneer Credit, then you need to dispute those loans, okay? This is not me saying it, y'all. Um, this is what the cases say. This is what the Consumer Finance Bureau says. Um, let me go back and look at some of these names y'all got on here. Okay, see, Missouri College, St. Leo. I'm not sure. University of Phoenix, yes, you can do University of Phoenix. University of Phoenix is basically wiping off all their student loans. So y'all about to get on it because I know y'all know people that went. I have never heard of Roosevelt University. You might have to hook, you might have to um, send me a message on Instagram. I'll look that up. There are no HBCUs. 
So I know a lot of people been putting Bethune Cookman on there. Y'all don't do Bethune like that. Do not do Mary McLeod Bethune that way, okay? So if y'all went to Bethune, you went to any HBCU, it will not be on the list. Y'all know HBCUs don't be getting no love like that, okay? Um, the name is the borrower's defense, okay? So I'm going to take questions that I never have. So if y'all have any questions, you definitely can come in and um, ask. Catherine Gibbs College... I have, people keep asking about that, but I have not seen that. Um, send me a message on Instagram. I am ready and I will look and let you know. It says, what if the college closed down 20 years ago? It doesn't matter if the college closed down 10, 20 years ago. Even if you got um, your transcripts, you do not have to stay at that school. You can't apply for the borrower's defense. And what they will do is make you basically give up your transcripts and they will wipe those loans. If you are somebody who went um, and paid some of your student loans and now the school is closed or if your loan is forgiven, you will get your money back. There, You can do it online. I would not recommend you apply online because the website crashes a lot on the, um, on the uh, government website, probably because a lot of people are applying. So get the application, get the paper application. It's 26 pages, okay? You can't skip on the application online, but on the paper application, you are you know, you could do a lot more. Um, if you want to go get the application, y'all can get it from me. I can send it to you. I, I have it with the instructions. You could just send me a um, message on Instagram and I will send you the instructions. The address is so weird, but they give you the application, but they don't give you an address to send it to. We do a lot. My office does a lot of um, borrower defense applications because a lot of y'all walk around here with bad credit for no reason. Lincoln College of Technology, I did not see that. Um, but y'all can send me a message on Instagram. I will check in another place that I have. There are more than one list, okay? This list that I put out, that was Navient's list. That's the list that Navient or the schools that Navient are getting, are, you know, they're getting sued with. No Western University. Kaiser is not on there. They're still open. Everest is on there. ITT is on there. Hold on. Let me get my phone. I'm going to read the names to y'all. I forgot. I got two phones. Duh. Okay. And then I'm going to tell y'all who is on this list. Now, FYI, I do lives on Monday. So I will be back here on Monday, every Monday at seven. But I just, I knew this was a big thing. So I wanted to um, talk about it. All right. So I'm going to go through these schools. Okay. Um, American Career Institute. The Career Institute of America, the Career Institute of American International College. Clark University Computer Career Institute, Westwood College, Redstone College, University of Phoenix, ATI Career Tech. Somebody asked me about that earlier, ATI Career Tech. Yes, I am in Melbourne. Um, Ashford University, definitely Ashford University, okay? Um, Le Cordon Bleu, anybody went to that, um, that uh, culinary school? That's on there. Sanford Brown, American Intercontinental University. Somebody asked about AIU. That's on there. Brooks Institute, Colorado Technical University, Briarcliff College. AIU is on there, homegirl. Okay, I'm going to get art institutes do qualify for forgiveness. Not according to this, but yes. Hey, you can come anytime. Come on, I'm over here on Beachside. Come visit me, homegirl. Let's go to the beach, hang out. College America. Independence University. Somebody asked me about Independence University and I said I wasn't sure, but it's on there. Stevens Henniger College, California College, San Diego. It says California College, San Diego. Bryman Institute. Virginia College is on this list. You could get this list from NavientSettlement.com. That is where I got the list from. Plus, y'all know I do a lot of research, okay? So y'all know I'll be digging for this info. Um, let's see, Bryman Institute, Everest Institute, or Everest College, y'all. Full Sail is not on this list, but Full Sail is a school you can do a borrower's defense on. I know that personally because I did one for somebody who lives here in this area that went to Full Sail, and that school is no longer around. So if you went to Full Sail, you can do that. Let me see if Lynn University, I don't remember. Let me keep going. DeVry, Ross University. Keller Graduate School of Management. I know a lot of people went to that school. Carrington College. You can get the application. If you send me an Instagram message, I will send y'all the, um, the whole instructions, everything. Um, American Career College is 
because I've seen that somewhere else. Um, this is American Institute. Send me a message on the American Career College because I believe that's someplace else that's not on this list. If your loan, it doesn't matter if your loan was transferred or not. So if it was with Navian and now it's transferred, you can still do it. If your school was another name, but now it's bought by another school, you can also still do it. Let me keep going down this list. Um, Everest Institute, Everest College, Heald College, Wyo Tech, DeVry University, Ross University. I said Keller School of Management, Carrington College, Virginia College, No Atlantic Union, no Northwestern, no Mandy School, but that doesn't mean it's not on this list, okay? Um, our Institute, remember I said our Institute, Brightwood College, Argosy University, um, Southern New Hampshire. No, Southern New Hampshire still open. Brown Mackey, I told y'all Brown Mackey was on here. South University, not Navia.com. Regency Beauty Institute is not on this list, but you can do borrows defense for any beauty institutes. I'm telling y'all right now. PTC, spell out what PTC is for me, um, or Waymaker, but I think it is. Minnesota School of Business, Globe University, Kaplan University, Clark Atlanta is on here for, um, there is a Clark Atlanta, but it's, no, excuse me, it's Clark University Computer Institute, so not that one. No University of Louisiana, those schools are still open, so they're not going to be there. Atlantic Union, if it closed while you was going, apply. It may not be on this list, but there are other places you can do it. Lincoln Technical Institute is on the list, okay? So um, I haven't even got down there yet, but it's on the list. What else we got? Um, Minnesota School of Business, Globe University, Kaplan, Kaplan Career Institute, Kaplan College, Mount Washington College, ITT, Lincoln Technical Institute. Ah, your favorite girl. Girl, look at that. We said it at the same time, girl, okay? Get that, get that off your um out your life, okay? Marinello School of Beauty. I couldn't believe that somebody actually went to that school, but Marinello School of Beauty, Beauty Institutes, any of those um art institutes, any of those uh technical institutes, they may not be on this list, but if that school is not open, you qualify, okay? Uh Salter College, Branford Hall, Hallmark Institute of Photography. Harris School of Business, American College of Medical Careers, okay? So right now, these are the schools that are being sued. I'm telling you, if Empire Beauty School, if you type up Empire Beauty School and you can't find it online, you need to do it. Concord Uni um, Concordia University, yes, ma'am, you should do it. It's not on this list, but Concordia Colleges, um, hold on. Concordia is, a, is um, it's not on this list, but I have seen it um, on another list. So if it's, um, if you, you can check or you can send me a message on Instagram and then I will check that school out for you. Okay. I have a ways to find out. Ashford University. Yes. Okay. So no reason. Basically all y'all going to do is apply. I got to smoke this. Then y'all are going to mail it. Then you are going to apply for um, forbearance. If you are making payments while you're waiting for this decision, you're wrong because this form says that while they're making the decision, you don't have to make any student loan payments. So if you've been waiting for this decision and it's after May, once student loan payments start again, and I'm giving y'all some game now, listen, because student loan payments resume May 1st. Um, no Gurnick Academy. American International, American um, American International is on the list. University of Phoenix is on the list. I did not see Francis Scan University. Um, you need to be on forbearance. So when the payment plans start in May, if you are in or if you're waiting for a decision, this is also why you guys need to do it because you automatically get to be on forbearance while you wait. So you may get extended time where everybody else has to go back to paying their, um, paying their um, student loan payments, you won't because this forbearance is not a is not the one that Joe Biden is doing. Okay, it has nothing. Sanford Brown, yes, you can do it. I did not see Iverson University, but yes, FMU, Florida Metropolitan is on there. Um, DeVry is on there. The list is at NavientSettlement.com. That's the website. If you want the borrower's defense application, you can get it online or you can send me an Instagram message and I will send you all the instructions. Okay. To tell you guys what to do. 
You do not have to pay your student loans while you're waiting for a decision. Okay? If you're somebody who is waiting for a decision, love y'all too. I will give you the form. I will give you all that. Um, I know. Come on and smoke with me. Um, you don't have to pay. And some people have been waiting two years. But I'll tell you, if you apply and you apply under the Trump administration for any student loan forgiveness, you need to apply again under the Biden administration. Why? Because it's a different person, secretary over the Department of Education. And under the Biden administration, they are way more lenient in giving you your approval. OK, my IG is the same. Shamika saves. Matter of fact, all my social media is the Shamika saves. So while y'all on fake YouTube, Facebook, hit me up. I drop game and gems all over the place. OK, so um, make sure you stay up with me. OK, um, if you cannot contact me through Instagram, hell, you can contact me on anything else. On the Shamika Saves, okay? So who else got schools? No, you cannot contact Navian. The, they explicitly say, do not contact them. And another reason why you shouldn't contact them is because Navian doesn't own your loans anymore. As of December 31st of 2021. Y'all know I always get hot when I'm on here. As of December 31st, 2021, Navian is no longer over your loans. I believe they have gotten switched to... um. Aid Advantage, it's like three of them that quit and three new that came on. So you can't wait for them to do it. It says, I'm on FedGov from Navient. They will not apply for me now. It says, if I'm on FedGov from Navient. Yes, it doesn't matter if your loans were switched. They can switch your loans. This All that matters is the school, not who you got your loans from, but the school you went through. If Navient had your loans at one time, you could still qualify. Y'all don't let that go, okay? Because what y'all don't realize is you have a federal debt in the federal system and you have a federal debt in your credit reporting system. So if you want these things gone, you got to put in the form. You got to do the borrower's defense form. <laughs> Nail net. Remember, we don't care about who you got your loans through. I'd rather you mention the school you went to. AIU is on the list. Now, you know FAMU Law is not on that list, girlfriend. No, no. I know you wish, but it's not. Um, if you had Navient, great. What school did you have? Because Navient going to be giving y'all $260 now. Don't y'all go spend it all in one place. Yes, this is 100% legit. I did not see Platt College on this list, but it doesn't mean that they're not on another list. There are other lists. OK, but this list came out just the other day. This list came out with the lawsuit. Empire Beauty School is not on here, but all beauty schools, if they're not still open, you can apply. I did not see Pasadena City College. And no, you're not going to see UCF because UCF is still open. Western Career College. Hold on. Let me see. I don't know why that sounds familiar to me. Do I see Western anywhere? Anytime they have a career college, that scares me. I'm going to also tell you to send me a message on Instagram and I will look it up. University of Phoenix, yes, but not Phoenix University. Yes, the application is 26 pages. It's asking you the same question over and over. ITT is on the list. Y'all better go and get these things removed. Now, I'm just on here talking about student loan. I haven't even told y'all. Y'all got to wait till Monday if I can tell y'all all the other stuff that's coming up this week. Because I'm telling you, if you're poor, you're going to have it going on in 2022, okay? If you're struggling, got some low income, they working with us this time, okay? So y'all make sure y'all be here on Monday. Pivot Beauty School, no. Kaplan College, yes. Virginia College, yes. Full Sail University, you can still do it. Um, Full Sail well, you know what it is? It wasn't called Full Sail University. It was called Full Sail. Wasn't it called Full Sail something else, Claudine? Because we did do a borrower's defense for somebody who went to Full Sail um, because it was another audio tech school. <laughs> so hit me up on Instagram. We could talk about it um, if you're unsure. The list is at NavientSettlement.com. Y'all can't research like I can, okay? I find anything. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Y'all know I'll be trying to give y'all some info, okay? Because um, it is so much stuff coming our way, y'all. So much, so much, so much. Rasmussen Ras College. It's not on this list, but I have seen people do it for borrower's defense 
I would apply. Corinthian colleges, yes. Yes, I'm on Facebook. It says, what if the university is still open, but the out-of-state campus is shut down? You, it depends because you can still apply for borrowers defense, even if some of the school is still open. Mm -hmm. But if the one you went to closed down, you have a good chance. Okay. If you graduated, you will turn back in your transcripts. Okay. They won't allow you to use your transcripts to say you graduated anymore. Brookstone college of business. No, I did not see Brookstone college of business on there. ECPI. Yes, it's on there. Um, Let's see. No, not Brookstone College of Business. Make sure it ain't been another name or make sure it ain't changed to another name. Y'all know these schools do everything. No, you do not have to reside in certain states. You just have to have attended the school. Some people go to online school in another area and that may be the school that cut shut down. Ashford University. Yes, sis. Get it out of there. Get it gone, Miss Everett. OK, Ashford and uh, uh, Everest and some of those schools just let make me go. I don't even want to say. Let me check for Davenport real quick. Um, Davenport, Davenport. Let me see. I do not see Davenport, but that doesn't mean that they haven't. Are they still open? That's my um thing. If your school is closed and you graduated from that school, no, it's not valid. Most of the time, your school probably lost their accreditation, which is why they're closed. And... If somebody were to go and try to validate those transcripts, who are they going to validate it with? Because the school is closed. Now, yes, they could check it out with Department of Education. But once the school is closed, usually in most cases, you're not supposed to. You, you don't have to use those transcripts anymore because that school is not around. So that is why the Department of Education came up with the borrower's defense. But they also came up with the closed school loan discharge. Those are two different forms. So if you went to school and your school closed... You can use the closed school loan discharge application that will remove the loans and get you your money back then or not then. Or you can do the borrower's defense and the borrower's defense is for people who feel that school use deceptive practices. So if your school closed down, you can still use this form um, or if you feel like. They tricked you and lied and got you into this school and now you can't get a degree or you can't not get a degree. You can't get a job or or, you know, whatever it is, you can go um, and use the borrower's defense. So there. Are, so either one is an option for you, depending on your story. OK, so it is quite a few schools on here, but there are more schools than are on this list. Um, the link you can't find the link in my bio. Um, I have two links in my bio. My link is to join my discord and my other link is to do a, a consultation, um, with me. So that's so crazy. I'm looking at people already Instagramming me. Thank y'all. Um, ECPI. Yes, it's on there. Blue cliff college. I did not see blue cliff. I saw briar cliff, but not blue cliff unless you, um, type that wrong, but briar cliff is on the list. The two options are the closed school loan discharge form that's one application that gets you your money back and removes the, the loans from your credit report and from the federal system yes ashford is on there the other option is borrowers defense advanced training institute it is on there ati is on there i'm telling y'all look at all these schools that done got y'all money and and the the case shows it that these schools use so much money to market to you guys to get you to come to these schools knowing good and damn well they were not gonna be able to come through with the come through and now y'all stuck with all this debt warner southern college is not on there that i see you can send me a message on instagram i will check out your school to find out for you ultimate medical academy no, but I always say check the medical academies because they close a lot. So uh, Ultimate Medical Academy is not on this list, but it doesn't mean that it's not there. If it's closed, we got a good chance. OK, now, if I don't know if anybody on here disabled, but if you're disabled, you can get them wiped off, too. OK. You don't have to do anything. They will automatically. So if you are disabled and this is for a lot of y'all, because I know all. At least all of y'all got one person in the family that got a little social security disability. And if they did, did you pull a credit report to see if they had student loans? Because some people went to school, even if it was one class. I did it with my mom. My mom is disabled. And she got a letter saying she owed $30,000 in, lo in loans. And it was a lawyer. And I called the lawyer and I said, she's disabled. 
And by law, she doesn't have to pay anything. We already applied for the um, TPD discharge, which is total permanent disability discharge. And she got her loans removed. They are not even reporting on her credit anymore. Okay. So if y'all know somebody that's disabled uh, or sickly on the doctor's care, never going to work again, fill out that application. I'm telling y'all under Joe Biden and this doggone education secretary, this is a time to wipe out a lot of stuff, especially dealing with these student loans. Ashford University is on that list. Yes, Miss Everett, they are big liars. Um, <coughs> I never cared for that school. University of Phoenix on the list. <coughs> Regent, <coughs> excuse me. Regents College, yes. Not on this list, but I have seen um, individuals do the borrower's defense for that school. So, yes, Regents. <coughs> Strayer, man, y'all doing Strayer wrong. I got both my masters from Strayer. Now, Strayer did get sued. I won't lie. Strayer got sued. A lot of campuses got sued. So if you went to one of those campuses, you can apply. The only way you're going to know is you're going to have to put in your application and let them see if you went to the school that was sued. Gardner-Webb University. Mm -mm. No. I don't see no garden web. Remember, check to see if it's still open. <laughs> okay. Look at that. I'm getting text messages because some of y'all got my phone number. Okay. This goes back. So it varies. I seen it say 2004. That's the furthest I seen it go back for Navient. But again, remember, I had a 62 year old lady. She went to Florida Metropolitan University back in the 80s. And we just sent her application off last week because that school isn't even open anymore. So there are, this is where they confuse y'all. And I want y'all to understand. I'm reading the Navient list of schools, but there are other lists. And there are, and the borrower's defense works for more than just these schools. What you guys need to do. Check to see if your school open. That's number one. Kaiser, no. I know everybody want Kaiser to be on here. No. Kaplan, no Kaiser. Kaiser's still open. Who's smoking with me this morning? Okay? I'm telling y'all. And also, if you guys are first responders, you nurses, you doctors, you um, police officers, firemen, if you're military, if you're librarians... Argosy is on the list, Angeli, Angela, Angelia Rosa. So, honey, go on and um, do that paperwork. I get so excited for y'all. I swear I do. Because um, I feel like throw it back in their damn face. The timeline for approval, that's the part. But here's what, what, um, what you need to do. Once you do the application, please... Um, contact your student loan servicer, regardless of who that is now, because it's probably not Navient, and you tell them you want to be on a forbearance because you are um, doing your application for borrower's defense. And according to the first page of the bar, excuse me, is it the first page? The last page. Either the first page or the last page of the application, it tells you that you need to uh, make sure you're in forbearance because you do not have to make any payments while they are doing why they are, um, you know, approving or disapproving your application. So it don't matter how long it takes because you ain't going to be paying them anyway. It says if the loan amount totals, if the loan amount totals with one school open and another close. If the one school is open and uh, one amount is closed, they, they can do a portion. I've seen partial forgiveness. Some people have gotten partial forgiveness. The name of the game is to wipe as much off as you can because I ain't trying to be funny. We don't know if Joe Biden going to be here. Okay, for this next go round. So right now, while he got this very lenient education secretary, we need to be jumping on the bandwagon. Okay, y'all know I'm all about pushing y'all to do stuff. Okay, we can't be lazy on this one. The process is easy. Fill out the application, mail it to Monticello, Kentucky. Make sure you're on forbearance and wait. That's it. And you can sit back just like this and smoke with me and we can talk to other people telling them how the process go. That easy, y'all. We don't want to wait. I'm telling y'all. I've been looking at this this damn year and, the, you know, we ain't got much longer left. Because under Trump, nobody got approved. 
with Betsy DeVos, nobody got to prove. This secretary guy we got, oh, he is good. So y'all better get on it. I have the application. Good, I'm glad. Um, Latonya said she just did an application online. Thank you. I'm glad you did. Everybody who's done it has told me the, um, the system would freeze. So absolutely. So let me go back to this for anybody that hasn't watched. And I know I hadn't said it this morning, but if y'all haven't watched me before, please follow me. I appreciate y'all support. You know, sister just trying to grow a little bit. I may not get on TikTok and dance and all that other stuff, but I'm trying to educate folks and I'm going to get to me a million followers too. And I can't do it without y'all. All right. Um, check your credit. Y'all, if anybody watch me, y'all know I'm always about that credit. And one of the things that came up in this case was that Navient was messing up people's credit by reporting inaccurate stuff. So I said it before. I said it last week to dispute. If Navient is on your credit, dispute. They don't own your loans no more. <laughs> if you have, um, what's the other school? Navient, Fed Loan. Granite State, you have any of those on your credit report, they shouldn't be. Why? They don't own your loans anymore. So if they're reporting that, that is inaccurate. And that is a violation of the Fair Credit Reporting Act. Okay? So um, if you haven't, this is the time to dispute all that. If you have pin credit on your um, credit report, because I know a lot of people were sent to collections. If you were sent to collections, then you... Um, need to be disputing to get that off. So yes, a lot of people do need to dispute. Great Lakes. Great Lakes is not um, in the... Well, let me take that back. Great Lakes falls under... Great Lakes falls under one of those three. So Great Lakes could very well be um, included. Now, I don't like to talk out of my... You know what? I like to be sure. So if you want to send me a message on Instagram, I will verify that for you. Um, but yes... And what's up, Latoya Latroy, Latroy Nelson? What's not valid? Let's talk. Sally Mae. <clears throat> Sally Mae used to be. You don't see Sally Mae anymore because Sally Mae became Navient. So if you got Sally Mae reporting on your credit, I don't know what's going on because they shouldn't be there anymore because they don't do loans anymore um, at all. I don't know if y'all know, but the government had a nasty breakup with Navient. They real mad. They are really mad at Navient, and Navient owes y'all $1.7 billion in bad loans. Oh, okay. I'm sorry, Latoya. Yes. So, absolutely, y'all. They owe y'all $1.7 billion in bad loans. And let me tell y'all, this is not in addition to what Biden and them was going to do. This is included in that. So, all of this $1 trillion that they talk about and loans and they're trying to wipe off, this is a part of it. So if you don't get your loans wiped off, you're in a bad way. Marymount. <clears throat> uh, no, Mount Washington, not Marymount. I know Marymount, though. I know somebody who went. Um, so how do you get this money? Man, there's a lot of ways to get this money now. Y'all got to watch me on Mondays at 7 p.m. I'm always talking about how to get this money um, because some of y'all just not proactive, Okay. You get the loans wiped off by applying for one of the programs. That's the first thing you need to do. You need to look at your loans, see what type of loans you got. I got people who got Parent PLUS loans. Well, if you got a Parent PLUS loan, you don't have to be stuck paying those loans. You can go and file bankruptcy and get out of them. You can never do that with loans before, but you could do that now. So nobody has to stay in student loan debt. <clears throat> If the, if the child is disabled or the parent that has to pay the loans becomes disabled, they got ways that, that you can get um, hardship. You don't have to pay them. Uh, does it say, does this include people who graduated in 2011? It doesn't matter what year you graduated, Galaxy Blue. If you went to ITT, you should be filling out that application because that school is gone. And, every, and ITT is the number one school they use for an example for who needs to fill out the form. So you need to run to my Instagram so I can send you um, the doggone instructions because ITT is on the, I'm looking at it, staring at me right here on the screen. Definitely do it. If you got Parent PLUS loans, you do not have to be stuck paying them now. They have come up with so many ways to get people out of debt. Why? I keep trying to tell y'all, we running out of money in this country. Okay? Not money that we can print because that's paper. We can print. We can print dollars. We, we, we run it, but we going broke. Okay, so Shamika says it's my um, IG. <clears throat> and y'all don't need to go down with it. So the best way to um, get it going 
is to get rid of stuff that you don't need. Then the next thing is to get rid of the god dang on debt, credit card debt. If you could do that next, that's the next thing. Online student federal aid. Yes. Again, follow me if you haven't. Um, like and share. If y'all got any questions about anything, please drop them. Y'all know I never really get on any other day but Monday. But I woke up and saw everybody else on here. And I'm like, I'm finna get on here too. And since I'm smoking, go ahead on and ask. Um, you know, y'all got questions about credit? What's going on? Ooh, we got some good stuff to talk about Monday. I don't even want to tell y'all. Whew. It's so much going on. In a good way. It's, it's Hopefully, people who are on the bottom, this is going to be your time to get on top. Because things are changing. And they're, gonna, they're starting to work with the poor people. They're trying to look out for the poor folks for a change. Okay? <laughs> Student loan forgiveness. Here go the programs. Public, public service loan forgiveness. You work for a nonprofit or, first, uh, or a, a uh, first responder, you can apply for that program. You can do Parent Plus and put them in bankruptcy. You can do um, this borrower's defense. You can do this closed school loan discharge. Uh, and then, um, hold on, I know it's another one. I know it's another one. Let me see. Did I, oh, the TPD, the um, total and permanent disability discharge. So if you're a veteran and you are 100%, if you get social security disability or if you are under a doctor's care, I know people that can never go back to work. They got really bad anxiety. Um, and, or, you know, and they may not be getting disability, but they take medication and have to stay home. They can qualify because as long as you can show the government that you'll never be able to have gainful employment, they will put your loans to the side and then get this, get this. Since y'all want to talk about the money, you only got to be disabled for three years if you're on social security or VA. And go back to school and then you'll never have to pay those loans back. Now, if you go to school before three years, they're going to activate those loans and make you pay them. But as long as you're disabled for three years, so you could be chilling for three years, get them loan wiped out and then go right back to school. And you don't even have to pay those other ones back. Now, if you do the other one where you go and you're under the doctor's care, you have to be unemployed. Um, excuse me. You have to be disabled for six years. Still, not bad, depending on age. You don't have to pay them back, and you can still go to school, okay? So they got those are the student loan forgiveness um, things that they have right now. Unless you want to go work for the government, which I tell everybody to do, and you can go on and let them um, pay some of them down uh, or pay them off for you. So they got a couple ways. Independence University. Oh, why do I feel like? Hold on. Let me see. Independence University. Independence Independence University is on the list. Okay. So yes. Oh, thank you, um, Shatavius. But I'm telling y'all, so it's ways. And none of the stuff I tell people to do is illegal. It's completely legal. But you got to learn how to read these laws and rules and apply them to your situation. If you apply them to your situation, you can have a much better life. And I was saying this to somebody yesterday. Black people, we just live life as it throw as it's thrown to us. We have to start planning for things, okay? Plan. If you don't plan, to, if you don't, um, what do they say? If you fail to plan, you plan to fail. That's very true, okay? Plan. Robert Morris University. Let me see. I don't think that's on there, but uh, let me keep going. No, Robert Morris University is not on this list from what I see. But that doesn't mean that it's not. That just means it ain't on this list, okay? So, thank y'all. But no, serious. So, anybody got anything else? Y'all know I want to keep y'all all morning. I'm sure y'all got something to do. But I want y'all to make sure y'all come on Monday because I got some stuff to tell y'all. So, a lot of some laws changing. Some stuff that might be um, beneficial. These companies getting sued left and right. And when they get sued, they make changes that work for us. So, who got a question about credit? I know everybody usually do. I seen some people up teaching credit this morning and I'm like, they don't even have the personality to even talk about credit. Oh, we could talk about unemployment. Main thing about unemployment is make sure y'all get y'all 1099 G's. I know um, the, the federal government gives everybody until the 31st of January to do, um, to give you your 1099, 7 p.m. on Monday. 
Thank you very much. Yes, you can book an appointment. I charge $20 to give you the game on what you need to do to get your financial situation right. Okay? That is all. You don't find no one to give you a, a, a um, cheaper credit consultation than moi. Okay? And um, make sure you bring a pen and a piece of paper because I do have um, instructions for everybody. Okay? We ain't just going to talk about credit and hang up the phone. We're going to be accountable. So you get instructions and I get instructions. And then we meet back up again and see where you at. 7 p.m. on Mondays. Every Monday. I'm live on here and um, YouTube and uh, Facebook. I'm telling y'all. And I don't been all week long. Keep screenshotting all my stuff I'm talking about. Because, whew. They thought because it was Martin Luther King weekend that we was going to be sleep people and not pay attention to stuff that's going on. But I got you. Okay. Just make sure y'all be there on Monday. Another school I got is Baker College. Anybody went to Baker College in Flint? That school is on there. You should have a million questions. And I'm sure I got a million answers too. So thank y'all um, if you want to uh, book an appointment. I appreciate that very, very, very much. Okay. Let me see. Oh, um, oh, and I got to tell y'all, see, this is why we want y'all to come. Cause on Monday, we finna talk about how, if you're on EBT, how EBT is, you can buy, you can buy stuff, um, off of Amazon with your EBT card. I mean, they is making stuff too. You can shop like you ain't even on food stamps no more. I don't know about y'all. 7 PM, um, Eastern I'm in Florida. So yes. So 7 p.m. Eastern. But we're going to talk about what the EBT is letting people do up in the 2022. Okay? They got a restaurant program, baby. You can go out to eat on the EBT car. Is y'all hearing what I'm saying? Out to eat on the EBT car. I'm in Melbourne, right outside of Orlando. So, okay, I am just want y'all to know. Let me see. Oh, and there's one other thing, because I know everybody likes to get on taxes. Let me tell y'all this about taxes, because... Too many people tell me that they can't file taxes because they're on disability. And that is why they sell their kids to other people. And if y'all know what I mean when y'all say, when I say sell kids, hey, Jacksonville, look, I'm scared to come to Jacksonville now because Jacksonville be on the news tad bit too much. But Jacksonville is perfect for rental properties, okay? So if you is into real estate investing, huh, you are in the perfect place to get you and turn some of them uh, crack houses into Airbnbs. Okay. Hey, Michigan. So, um, uh, just so y'all know, tell somebody and y'all might not know this, but all a person has to earn in side income or business income is $400 and they can file. So if somebody tells you, and if you're a tax preparer, or if you're somebody that's on disability, please stop believing that you can't file taxes because you didn't work. You can, you have work. You done made $400 in the business doing something in 2021. And if you did, you should be filing your own taxes. Uh, even if you're on disability, it's not going to mess up your income because $400 divided over 12 months is change. It's nothing. So um, I don't want to hear anybody say that they can't do it. So I'm just letting y'all know, this is the kind of stuff we talk about. So I know y'all got questions about taxes and it's Saturday. This is the time to get them answered before y'all go see y'all tax people. If y'all don't come see me, but, um, yeah. So if you're on section eight, you can still file taxes. If you, um, on SSDI, you can still file taxes. All you got to have is $400 at minimum in income. Okay. All right. Native Orlandian living in St. Louis now hoping to move back. I'm telling you, we don't need no more people coming to Florida. You can come, you can come back, but we don't need no more people moving to Florida because rent is so high. You know why people move to Florida? Because there's no state income tax. It's very cheap to live here, but now we have everybody coming from everywhere else and they're driving the prices up. So if you are a native Floridian and you've been here I'm sure, and you're renting, I know you've seen your rent skyrocket. And guess what? It's not going to stop. It's going to continue. And more than likely, they're going to vote Ron DeSantis back in, which means he's going to bring more and more and more people here because he encourages that. Okay? So um, uh, you guys need to, if you got bad credit, y'all know I'm going to keep saying it. Y'all better fix it. 
Because if not, you're going to be using CPNs for the rest of your life. And nobody ain't got time to be getting caught up with no CPNs. All right? It is definitely time to buy a house because it's way cheaper than rent. But if you ain't good with your money, stay in an apartment. Because I do not want to see that house on the foreclosure block in a year. All right? But definitely, um, it's, if you need to fix your credit, well, ain't no need. Let's get on it. Everybody need to do something to their credit, even if it's cleaning up a couple inquiries, even if it's changing your job employment, your employment, your credit report should never say self-employed. Why would it say that? If I'm a bank and I see your loan application come across my desk and I pull your credit and it says self-employed, I'm thinking you're a risk. I don't want to loan any money to you. How many of y'all got stuff on your credit report, especially in the employment section? That don't look right. I will wait. Because I know. I see them. It says self-employed. Or it'll say McDonald's. No. You know what it's supposed to say in there? Um, management. Uh, you always make it vague. I don't ever list the company. If When I was working for the government. Although I worked for several agencies. NASA. FEMA. Um, Department of Veteran Affairs. I worked for a lot of places. I only put... U.S. government. Yes, we do need to cross-pollinate. We are local. Send me a message on Instagram. Definitely. I would um, love to uh, chat it up. Shoot. Okay, because I be in this house too much. But y'all need to make sure stuff like that is correct. How many misspellings y'all got of y'all name? I'll wait on that. Okay? I know they don't spell your name wrong. You probably got seven, eight, nine spellings on there. You leaving yourself wide open for identity theft because I can fill out an application and be a scammer and I can misspell your name the same way you have it on your credit report and your application will get processed because it'll match a name that's already on your credit. So the bank will think that that's you. So when you have all those incorrect things on there, you just leave yourself wide open for somebody to pretend to be you. So think about that when you got uh, all these middle initials that ain't yours. When you're carrying Junior, and that's not who you are. Even if you're a twin, you know how many twins I have that have the other person's information on your credit? If it ain't helping you, it's hurting you. So it needs to go. Y'all see me hitting this little baby ropes. This is when you know you love the weed and you just don't want to let it go. Anybody else been dealing with this? Maybe it's just me. Instead of self-employed, instead of self-employed, I would put, um, I put the a position um uh supervisor i'll put manager or i'll put management i'll put um um i mean because you could put management you're a manager you manage your business you could put that that's my that's my actual preferred one to put is management uh just because it doesn't say anything and that's fine because you don't need them to know what you do for a job that's not what you're supposed to be basing my credit off of you're supposed to base it off my score okay so uh yes them student loans hurt the only way that student loans are hurting your credit is if they are unpaid or in the negative student loans do not hurt they are actually good debt to have they're backed by the government so as long as you take care of uncle sam uncle sam will take care of you so if you go into a bank and they see a car loan or a student loan, they probably will be happier to see student loans than car loans. Okay? Um, so the student loans need to be in good standing for them to be good. But they can't hurt you because they're actually good debt to have. Now, they do affect your debt to income ratio. So if you have a lot of student loans um, and your income isn't high enough, then you probably should be playing for a borrower's defense because obviously that school lied to you and got you to go, go and get all these loans and now you can't get a job to pay for it. So, um, or you need to get better employment. I hate to say that, but some of y'all are working down when y'all need to be working up because you're afraid to take the next step. Some of y'all need to lie on y'all resume. You do. Some of y'all need to embellish on your resume so that you can get better positions uh, to me, when I did a resume, I always did the job for what I wanted, not for what I did. I just thought ahead because I know if I kept only putting that I was just doing customer service, well, that's all they were ever going to get me for. So I always went extra. Concord. Concord University is, hold on. I think Concord is on the list. Where are my photos at? Oh, 
I'm in my photos. One second, one second. Um, I'll send y'all the list if y'all send me a message on, on Instagram. Um, Conquer, Concord, Concord. Now they got Concordia Universities, but I don't see Concord University on there. Um, unless you're talking about Concordia Colleges. Where do I find a website to fill out the application? Just send me a message on Instagram. I'll send you the instructions. It's easier than just telling you to um to then to go to a website. I will send it to you. Okay. Sorry, that's just it works easier for me to do it that way. I can mass send y'all a text or send y'all a message. I mean, okay. So yeah. So definitely, um, this is the year, y'all. Get this, uh, get this credit together. I'm tired of y'all coming and talking about you need a loan for your business. You ain't never gonna get one, especially when that credit bad. And please stop thinking that you can do business credit and that's gonna skip your personal credit because they lied to you, sis. Right, it's my debt to income. I am a program manager for the state. I don't make enough money. And that's an unfortunate part um, that people have decent jobs like that, but you don't make enough money because you went to school. And then it makes you think, well, damn, I'm never going to tell my kids to go to school because they can't afford. What I would tell you to do in your type of um, situation, because you do got a good job working for the state, and don't leave that, honey, because that's retirement. We need to find you a side hustle. You got to make you some money for something that you do on the side. You're going to need some self-employment. Now, let me just say this and i'm not encouraging anybody to lie all right but i'm just telling y'all how it is the mortgage company don't know what y'all making okay the only way they know what y'all making is what y'all put on y'all tax refunds okay excuse me y'all tax returns so uh say for example you t t coop t you wanted to get a house your debt to income ratio ain't looking right right we already know you need more you need more income so what if you for the next year or two because mainly they're going to look at the net the uh the last 24 months so you could say man for the next two years i'm gonna put on my taxes that i um have my state job and i have a side business that i earn now you're gonna have to put income for the side business because you're gonna have to increase your adjusted gross income but what's gonna happen is you're gonna owe taxes but you cannot have somebody itemize to lower that amount because if they itemize to to keep you from owing irs it's just going to change your adjusted gross income and that's not what we want so you could report on your taxes for the next two years an increased amount of money that you earn from your side business plus your job yes you'll owe taxes you just gonna need to make the minimum payment and then in two years you could turn around and get you a house because when you take that to the mortgage company that's what they're looking at your taxes they don't ask for no pay stuff and they're not going into your bank account now like again i'm not telling you what to do but i know that is what people do so when people come to me and they're self-employed i basically just tell them this is what you have to have when you go into the bank so however you make that work that's how you got to make it work but it's all in planning so you can't just think you're going to put some numbers down and think you're going to walk away and not owe the IRS. You're going to have to pay them something. That's the name of the game. So you want to play, you got to pay to play. So you can put down that you made 100000 but you may owe 20000 to the IRS. Now that doesn't, that increases, your, um, that affects your debt to income ratio too. But, it, but the bigger goal is to get the house. Once you get the house, you can file bankruptcy. You don't owe nobody. Okay. So, um... That's just, you know, that's how I put some stuff together. So we can talk about it, but that would be basically how our conversation would go if you booked or any of y'all booked a, um, uh, a consultation with me. Because we be trying, I just want to help y'all figure some stuff out. Because some people just don't know the process. But if you understand the process, you can form your situation around it. That's how I work. All right? Let me see what y'all saying. Okay. So, all right, it's 9.50. I'm going to stay on here about 10 more minutes. Um, what else? All right. So we talked about, um, it's Empire State College. No, I did not remember seeing that school, um, on the list. Uh, it says you were the first page I saw when I logged in this app. This is a blessing thing. Oh, thank you. I hope it is. You know what? I'm, let me tell you, I just let God, um, definitely, uh, use me and tell me where it is, um, or who it is that I'm supposed to, uh, help. I know a lot of stuff. And uh, it's boring if you keep it to yourself. So I just be on here running my mouth with y'all. So if I can help somebody with the information that um I have, then hell, that's what I'm supposed to do. So thank you, uh, thank you very much. Okay, and I can talk about God and still uh smoke some weed. Okay, cause we keep it real over here. He understands, and um 
you know, it's from the earth, right? So, um, the, uh, let's see. I need to know the process on how to remove Parent Plus loans. Yeah, we could talk about it. The, um, Parent Plus, they got a couple ways. But, you know, if there's no disability in your life from you or from the child, um, and uh, if the school hasn't closed down, then you could look at throwing it into a bankruptcy, okay? So uh, I'm going to always talk about bankruptcy. I'm going to get to y'all in just a minute. Bankruptcy is what rich people do. And if y'all don't start getting bougie about bankruptcy, then something's wrong, okay? I have too many people on this page that um, are misinformed about bankruptcy and think that it's just the worst of the worst when, in actuality, it's a federal program. If they created it, why would it be bad, okay? Why would they create something bad that they have to back? They don't do that, okay? Uh, so, um, if bankruptcy is no different than EBT or WIC. It's a program that you use. So, uh, if some of y'all need bankruptcy, I'm absolutely going to say you may need to consider it. Why? Because some of y'all don't have nothing anyway. No offense. But if you don't own nothing, you don't have anything. Why do you care if you file bankruptcy? Because the goal is to get something. I got a, I have a girl. She is, a, she just got her RN. She called me and said, I've been watching and I know my credit bad. And she was like, I'm becoming an RN and I'm going to make good money. And she said, I want to start over fresh. She's like, I don't want to walk into my new job with all of these medical bills and all this and all that. She was like, my kids deserve more. And I was like, your kids do deserve more. And after we got to talking and she realizes that if she files a chapter seven, she wipes out $70,000 in debt. She can start fresh and in two years, get a house. She was happy about it. Very happy about it. We worked on her credit, make sure everything came off. Now, bankruptcies can be removed. So please don't let people tell you that they cannot be because they can. All right. Um, but again, that's something you got to plan to remove. So you have to work with your um, credit person so that you can do it. Everest Institute is on there. Um, it says, I need to know. Okay. So we talked about Parent Plus. My first time here joint. Thank you very much, T-Baby. On the borrower's defense, what did it say about the borrower's defense? It says, hi, for the borrower's defense to repayment, what, what allegations to choose? Me, if your school is closed, put down that your school is closed. If you feel like they um use deceptive practices, then say that. They use deceptive practices to, to uh, get me to enroll. And basically, it's cut and paste. So make sure you use that over and over and over because they're going to ask you that question a lot. Uh, and then the other option would be um, school clothes. They use deceptive practices. And then I think you can use, um, what's another one? Uh, 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 I think those are going to be probably the two. I know it's one more, but it's, I, I'm drawing a blank right now. It's probably because I just smoke, okay? Uh, how would I file bankruptcy? You can file bankruptcy. Um, believe it or not, you do not need an attorney to file bankruptcy, especially if you're doing a Chapter 7 because it's basic. It's very easy. Did I mention I file bankruptcy for people? Yes, I do. I'm a bankruptcy petition preparer. So I have lots of people that say I'm not trying to pay $3,000. And you know how much I charge them? $187. Why? Because the law says I can't charge any more than that. So they pay $187 and they're wiping out way more. Okay. Just did one for last week, $190,000. She had, um, her daughter drove her car. Her daughter got into a car accident. But because her and her daughter lived in the same house, but they were not on the insurance. Her daughter wasn't on the insurance. Y'all know how we always be trying to, you know, save a buck or two. So when we be in the same house, we be like, well, we don't need to put them on the insurance. She didn't put her 17-year-old daughter on the insurance. Her daughter got into a wreck, knocked out a light pole, hit another car. And she came to me because she was getting sued by the other person for $120,000. Enterprise rent a car. Um, because the other person was driving a rental car suing her for $24,000. The electric company charged her $8,700 because they had to put in a new not light pole. Um, and the towing company, I mean, it just keeps going. And when we did it all, it was $190,000. She's not even 40, okay? So people like that, hell yeah, we gonna do it. Um, so nobody should have to be um, losing a driver's license because they can't afford to pay a bill. And you know why I don't feel sorry? Um, why I encourage her to do it is because a rich person would do it. If they were about to lose their Rolls Royces and, and Jaguars and all of this, 
and they can file for bankruptcy protection, that's what they're going to do. That's why it's called bankruptcy protection. Y'all know, y'all don't even hear people say protection at the end. You know why? Because they want to use the word bankruptcy to scare you, to make you think, ooh, it's bad. But it's called bankruptcy protection. And it's called that because the federal government, when you file bankruptcy, they step in the way and go, hey, this person is protected by us. They broke. Leave them alone and let them get their stuff together so they can get back on their feet. That's all bankruptcy is doing. It stops people from calling your phone, sending you mail, taking you to court. How many of y'all don't got, don't got served or don't know somebody that got served by Midland Funding, Portfolio Recovery, LVNV Funding, the top three companies that sue? I know y'all know. So if you purchase a home and then file bankruptcy, would you have to be in Chapter 13? You, you can be in the Chapter 13. Um... Depending on if you're married, your income, it's a couple different things like the state you're in. Um, some people have done, I have done chapter sevens with married couples that own homes. The, uh, one couple had a home and four cars. And because the income was low, we still were able to get away with doing a chapter seven. So you don't always have to do a chapter 13. But again, when I was saying these are the type of things you plan for. So you already, if we were going to uh, talk, I would say, girl, we're going to already find out. Do you plan on staying in the same state you're going to stay in? If so, we're going to find out the rules to see if, um, you know, if you had a house, would you would you have to be in a 13 or a 7? Because that would decide what your next move would be. We may not want you to get a house and go into a, um, uh, a 13. We may have you wipe out the debt, then in bankruptcy in the chapter 7, and then get a house. I mean, it's all kind of ways to play it. You just, you know, we just got to talk about it. Thank you, Nisi. I appreciate it. I know some of y'all got to get up and go, but I can do this. This is, I enjoy this kind of stuff. Um, it says, I'm so glad I caught this live. You started my day off with great news. Thank you very much for pitying me. Child tax credit. Ooh, girl, I love child. Okay. Um, so I don't know if y'all saw the video, but I had to put it out. I'm actually kind of I'm mad because it did not get a lot of shares, but this is new. Um, and the IRS does not like to put out, and the government just don't put out info, y'all. But if you know somebody that had a baby this year that died, I only got this information because a, a customer or a follower, she inboxed me and said, I had a baby. My baby lived for three hours and then died. Can I file taxes and get child tax credit? And that was a good question. I knew she could. But for earned income tax credit, but I didn't know if she could do for the rest. And yes, as of this, excuse me, as of 2021, mm -hmm. if someone had a child born, stillborn, or they were born alive and then died, they still can file taxes this year for that child and get earned income tax credit, child tax credit. And the dependency care credit. Those are the three credits that everybody wants this year. Okay. So yes, you can do that. So make sure y'all, I know y'all know someone. Or we all might know someone who lost a baby. All right. Um, uh, and you can watch my video. My video tells you how to file the taxes to get it. Cause you can't do it your regular way, but you can get paid. Um, let me see. Um, hold on. So all right, next thing about the child tax credit, a lot of people want to know if someone else got the money last year and I'm filing my child this year. Will I get the money? Yes. All of it. You will get all of it. The $3,600 or $3,000 credit. So yes. Okay. Um, let me give y'all a breakdown on these numbers. Again, I will be going over this stuff again on Monday at 7 p.m. on my normal live show. But earn income tax credit max that you could claim is three children. On the dependency and care credit, the max you can claim for children is two. On the child care credit, the max is unlimited, all right? So a lot of people are going to claim their own kids this year because of that. So I'm going to do that again. Earn income tax credit, max children you can claim is three. That's the max they'll pay you for. Dependency care credit, that's the one that you can get to 16. You can claim up to 16,000 and give you back eight. That, the max is two, and then the child tax credit is unlimited, all right? So you can have as many kids as you want to and get paid. Um, it says, yep, and you smoking what came from the earth. He, gave, he sure did. He gave it to us. What's the difference between the two? 
Queenologist, I don't know if I answered your question. Let me know if I did. Says, Lord, I haven't I have learned so much information even when researching myself. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Um, thank you, uh, Cassidy Smile. Heck, my sister was being sued by a credit card company. I'm telling you, if she being sued by a credit card company, tell her to holler at me. I just had a man walk off the street and come to my office. Um, he is also being sued uh, for 20, I think it's like 20,000, no, $16,000 for a credit card. And he normally wasn't going to file bankruptcy, but I think he decided to file this time because this lawsuit took him over the top. Now, um, he, and we, I looked at his pay stubs and he works at Pizza Hut and he's a Pizza Hut delivery driver. And every week he brings home about $200. That's nothing. Okay, and that's no shade on him or anything, but two hundred dollars a week, that's eight hundred a month. Um, he has all unpaid credit cards on his bills, he pays child support, he has to make a living, and he's just getting sued. And so he was like, I just can't take it anymore. I'm the burden of the stress, and that's what I'm saying. The stress of your financial situation, it doesn't have to be heavy. It doesn't, it it really doesn't. You can dump that stuff back onto those creditors and walk away. Okay, Airbnb. Well, of course, I think Airbnb is a great thing to make money. Everybody's seeming to do it now. They use the CPNs instead of Social Security numbers, though. But um, if you can get your an Airbnb, I think it's very, very smart. Um, being that there's no real estate available hardly anywhere. If you could do an Airbnb, get it as an apartment and then make it an Airbnb, meaning subleasing. Um You'll make out like a fat rat. Just make sure you got somebody that's going to watch that apartment and, and turn it over every time you have somebody leave. So um, Airbnb is great. Turo. Turo, what a lot of people don't know is um, Turo allows you to put up cars up to 15 years old on there and up to 150,000 miles. So if you have a car you're not using, why aren't you putting it on Turo? Rental cars are going up. Oh, way up and hurts rent a car. Nobody wants to rent from them because they're calling the police on people and saying the cars are stolen. So uh, people are moving more and more towards Turo. You know what else people are going to start doing? And when it happens, don't say I ain't tell y'all. People are going to start rent, uh, renting their cars to people like a monthly car, just like they would at a dealership. And they're going to do it because they're going to be people who are watching just like y'all who are still not going to fix their credit. And then you're going to have no other choice but to go to somebody else and ask them, can I pay you seven, eight hundred dollars a month to ride your car around? Why? Because rental car companies are checking credit now. If you're using a debit card, they're checking your credit because they want to know if you have um, the propensity to pay it back. If you if they got into a car accident, if you got into a car accident, excuse me. So they're going to come up with a new company where they're going to start getting people who got good credit. And they're going to get a car and then they're going to start renting a monthly car to people who have bad credit. Okay. Now y'all can steal the idea because I know it's going to happen and people on Turo can do it now, but they're gonna actually going to have a company that's going to do it. And some kind of way they're going to find a way to protect the people who put their cars on there. But if y'all don't fix your credit, that's what's going to happen. You're going to be in that group. How do I get my car in my business name? Well, you get your car in your business name. If you have good personal credit. If you have established business credit, and then you have to find a car dealership that deals with a bank that is going to allow you to get the car only in your business name. A lot of these companies, these people that brag on these Facebook groups that they um, got their car in their business name, they're not showing y'all their personal credit because it's probably reported on there. And a lot of these finance companies want that to happen. Because either you haven't been in business more than five years, they want to make sure that you're not a fly by night because it doesn't take but three months to set up business credit. So if they know you can set up business credit in three months and make yourself look perfect, why would they take the risk of giving you a forty, fifty thousand dollar business a, a car loan and they don't even know if you can pay it back? So you need to be in business for a little while. Certain places uh, use Ally Bank, and um, they're very hard to get a loan that is not PG, meaning no personal guarantee, meaning they don't put it on your personal credit. So if you want to get a business, a car in your business name, you need to be around for a little while and have a strong 
a business credit history and good personal no really good personal credit and i don't mean it has to be seven eight hundred but it it needs to be very high sixes meaning over 680 leaning into the 700s if not in the 700s so that you can get one or wait till you pay your car off and then just deed it into um put the title in your business name that's one way all right that's right. Never heard protection. That's right. They never say bankruptcy protection. They're not going to say it. Y'all have to realize this. fear rules the world. And if they can make you scared of everything and keep you from the things that you're supposed to have, you ain't never going to get it. And they stay in control. Um, that's why they don't ever tell you that you don't have to have a lawyer to file bankruptcy. You can have a, a bankruptcy petition prepared. And, but look, they let uh, lawyers charge three and four thousand dollars. But we can only charge 187. Is that not hate or what? But I don't care because at the end of the day, y'all getting financial freedom is what's important to me. And you utilizing the program that the government made to your advantage. That's what you're supposed to do. Okay? So you won't find people that are going to do $187 because that's what legally they say you can charge. And speaking of charge, even though I said I was going to go, when y'all get y'all taxes done, y'all make sure that y'all not y'all are not overpaying. People still paying $1,500 to get their taxes done? Come on. Come on, y'all. No. Ridiculous. What y'all don't even know is that it's illegal to charge over $1,200. Didn't know that, did you? But it is. All of those banks, MetaBank, you're in the Refund Advantage, Santa Barbara, those places that give you those refund checks, they say in the way tiny print to the person that owns that tax company that they can't charge you more than $1,200. If they find out they will cut ties with that company, will not let them process any more checks because they know it's ripping people off. Now, they can rip you off by giving you that high-ass um, tax advance, and they can charge you 39%, but they don't want the tax preparer to do it. So if you're paying more than $1,200, you're wrong. If your tax preparer charging more than $1,200, you're wrong too, okay? So... FYI, since we were talking about that. And if y'all need a set of an appointment, please hit the link in the bio. Um, I was just on a call with a girl last night at, at 7 p.m. Okay, talking about CPNs and stuff. She was asking me my opinion, and I was just giving it to her. So y'all can do the same thing. Um, did I say they give you money? Who? A lot of people give you money. And definitely be out sniffing trying to find it. I need some financial advice. How do I get an appointment? Just hit the link in the bio. Absolutely, please. And, um... Let's just talk. Any credits for our kids in college? Um, I mean, the only credits you can normally get is a lifetime learning and American Opportunity credit. But if your kid is in college, um, you got to ask yourself, would it be more? Um, uh, well, no, nah, because they probably get financial aid. So you're probably going to want them to be claimed under you. Um, they don't really give a lot when you got ki kids in, in college. I'm going to tell you the best way. And I tell this to all my clients, if y'all are hurting in y'all tax refunds, y'all it's because y'all don't have, um, the side business. Y'all don't have a schedule C y'all don't, y'all have not, um, said, you know, added that you do something or have a sole, you're a sole proprietor. And if you're a sole proprietor or you run some type of business, that's the only thing that's going to help you because your, you itemize it helps give you money. Um, or lower your tax liability. So, because kids don't really get you nothing, especially when they're over age. And I know when you got college kids, you're really only adding them because you got to for student loan purposes. But that would be what I would say if you're trying to, if you're tired of owing or if you're tired of a small refund. Um, I have so much student loan debt, it's unreal. Okay, well, if you have student loan debt, then we got to find out if you got a way to get out of it. There is a way. Hey, let me tell you, I had... um. 250. I knew the max of student loans was 150,000 and I knew I was going to get every dollar and I maxed out my student loans on purpose. Okay. And I was using my student loans and I was getting my house fixed up. I was because it's my money. Once they disperse it to me, I use it for what I want. So I'm not doing anything wrong with the money. Not like people did with the PPP or the SBA. Let me just clear that up. But I knew that I was never going to pay my loans back and my mind had already planned out what I was going to do. And, um, yeah, so I wiped mine completely out. Uh, so it's very possible, you know, if you fall up on the right program, you know, you make it happen. But, and that's what I did for me. But, um, we could talk about it. If not, you might have to do that tax thing I mentioned. Um, you could get into a house. It's not impossible. 
I love your live because you give us a lot of details on different stuff. Thank you, C baby. I appreciate that. I don't know how I know so much stuff. It's just I read all the time. I ain't even gonna lie. I can't wait to get off this live, just roll up another blunt and to read some more stuff. Because I really am excited about Monday. I know I keep talking about Monday and I'm not saying this to get y'all to watch the live, but I'm excited because there's so much stuff that's coming out and it's about time to have good news. Plus, I found some grants. Yes, I did. I found some grants. So um, we don't have to worry about SBA because we got some other places we can get some money from. Um, and, you know, no offense to none of my white sisters out there, my white brothers, but if you chocolate, you is in right now. OK, so they got every type of thing for black. So if you black, you better get on it. All right. Female, male. Let me cover up. I'm trying to show y'all my goodness. But if you're black, it's in. So this is the time to start applying for stuff. All right. Um, thank you. Set up an appointment, please. Can you help a young man get a student loan? Absolutely. Uh, he, it shouldn't be hard for him to get a student loan. All he has to do is fill out his FAFSA application, but I can't if he needs any help with it. What if you have no kids and have a small business? Will you still get a refund? I don't have no kids and I have, um, and yes, you can still get a refund with no kids. You're just going to have to be uh, a sole proprietor. You need to have a business, but yes, you can. People think that because you don't have um, kids, you can't get nothing. People don't know that even single people get earned income tax credit. It may not be a lot, but you can get it. So um, you just have to meet the income requirements. People don't read those things because the IRS makes stuff so boring. But um, you meet the min these income thresholds, you'll get money. We just don't see it. Why? Because we already underpay taxes. How many of y'all got 10 exemptions? Y'all not paying no taxes, and then you wonder why you don't get no refund because you're not paying nothing in. You know, what I scared money don't make money, right? It, it, you got to pay to play. So if you want a refund, you got to put in money. A tax refund is not even a good thing. I, I hope y'all know that. And if y'all don't, let me explain. Now, child tax credit is good, earned income tax credit is good. Any of the credits that you get outside are fine. But if you are a single person with no kids, and I file your taxes and you get a refund of $1,200. That tells me you paid $1,200 too much. You're really, at the end of the year, if you don't have kids, you're really supposed to have this. You're not supposed to pay them anything and they're not supposed to owe you anything. That means you paid the right amount of taxes. That is the only reason they give you a tax refund is, is to give you a refund for what you overpaid. And then those people who have kids or who are married... When you get a refund, it's because they owe you a credit of some sort, a refundable credit. So like the stimulus, that's a refundable credit. So uh, even if you didn't work, you didn't do anything, you get that money. But the um, let's use the um, American Opportunity Credit. That's a credit. But it may not give you any money if your tax liability is zero, meaning if you don't owe the IRS anything. The stimulus will still make you get $1,400, but the American Opportunity Credit, it won't give you anything. It's not refundable, if that makes any sense. I'm trying to make it make sense for y'all, but it has to be a refundable credit. So the only people who really end up with stuff is because they, they're getting paid a refundable credit, but you're really not supposed to receive a tax refund. I know people probably don't know that, but um, you're not. So the even if they owe you $40 or $50, that's fine, but that means that you are more accurate in paying the right amount of taxes that you should okay that's called that's what would be tax planning that's just something that we don't do so it, it makes me laugh when i look at how everybody come alive at tax season and it's like you should be living all year round and if you paid your taxes right you can ball out every two weeks when you get paid i do not only want to ball out in february that's not what tax season is about and then a lot of y'all balling because of y'all getting refundable credits for your kids, and that's fine. But if you balling out because you're getting a refund because you paid too much money in, who's the fool? You're getting a refund because you paid too much money in, who's the fool? All that extra money, you know what they're doing? Putting it in the stock market and making money off of your money. And that's money that you could have and you could put in the stock market and make money, but you didn't. You gave it to Uncle Sam. Okay, that's how I want y'all to think. Y'all leaving all that money in the bank. What you think the bank doing? Gambling with your money. Putting it in the stock market where you could be putting your money. Okay. 
All right, so I ain't gonna go on because I go on and on. It says, I'm Mexican, we still count, right? Absolutely, you people of color, you count. Brown and black are in, I'm sorry. And that's not to anybody that's not this color. I'm just telling you, I, I see where the grants are going. I read these federal registers and I know where they're putting the money. If you got, if you're LGBT, black, brown, homeless, you live in a rural area or, or Native American, that's where the money is going in 2022. Okay, I want to know about tax credit versus tax exemption. So that was what I was saying. A tax credit, it would be something like the stimulus. A, a credit means it, it'll end with something positive at the end, meaning you're going to get something back. A deduction is just a deduction. So when you do um, self-employment and I put that you spent um, $2,000 on tires, if you ever see, if somebody ever did your taxes, you'll see that your taxes, if you owe the IRS, it doesn't reduce dollar for dollar. A tax credit is dollar for dollar. A tax deduction is a percentage of a dollar. So you, so if you ended up owing $5,000 to IRS and I put in um, uh, self-employment expenses for you, I can write your, I can put in enough itemizations that I can lower the amount that you owe the IRS. That is what a tax deduction does. But a credit is if you owe IRS $1,400 and then I apply for your stimulus when we file taxes this year, that $1,400 cancels out the $1,400 you owe. It's dollar for dollar. I hope that makes sense. Okay? Um, no, I don't want you to go run and take your money out. But what I do think is that we need to have a little bit more control over our money because we just let our money sit. Like, I'd rather you have the money hit the bank and spend it on a bill than let it sit in the bank and let the bank use it. And I'll give you an example. When the stimulus first, not stimulus, when COVID first happened and my aunt works at a bank, she called me and said, we have no more 50s and 100s and we can only give out a maximum of $5,000 because we don't have enough money on hand. People have to call to arrange for the bank to order money so that they can have it on hand. So... You, the money you put in the bank, is not even there. That's why I don't understand why people rob banks. You ever seen anybody rob a bank and become a millionaire? Nope. You know why? Because they don't keep a million damn dollars in the bank. It's in the stock market. Okay? And they get interest and they're earning interest in, uh, uh, and, and um, all of this off of our money. So the more money we put in the bank, the more money they put in the stock market. If y'all don't believe me, it is called um, fractional... Um, the fractional reserve. Okay. It's, it's all right. It's a real thing. So if you put a hundred dollars in the bank, the bank only leaves $10 in there for you and they loan out the other 90 and that's how they keep making money. The banks make money by selling products. They sell checks, accounts, overdrafts. Um, uh, that's why you got to sign up for all these things. They, they make their money from products. Okay. So if you don't have any kids, that's how you make the money. If you're not earning anything, then that could be an issue of maybe it's time to find another job or maybe it's time to go back to school or maybe it's time to find a hustle. All y'all can do something. Everybody can do something. I don't know why everybody don't have no, no, no hustle because everybody can do something. If you're homeless queenologist, then you need to dial 211 in your area on your cell phone and that will take you to um, United Way. And they will let you know what programs they have. Nobody should be homeless. Nobody should be homeless. I'm sorry that you're going through that. But if you can't get at a shelter, then you need to do 211 and see if they can't. Because these states are getting money to put people in housing. That's another thing. If you're homeless, in those places, you they, put, they got money. Okay? They not paying you no attention, call the news. Call your senator or congressman. That'll get people to start putting you in the house. I promise you. What about if you don't have an LLC, but you do a lot of side hustling? You're a sole proprietor. You don't have to have an LLC to file um, as a business. You could be a sole proprietor. You don't even have to have an EIN number. Okay? So holla at me. Tax time coming up. I will send y'all my link. If you want my link, you can just um, upload your info, and I'll call you, and we'll do it. Um... Very easy. So side hustling is where it's at. We, what we need to do is turn these side hustles into LLCs, okay? We, we need to stop side hustling because you're hurting yourself. 
especially now that they're going to be monitoring Cash App, Venmo, and all of those things. If you got a side hustle and you are not turning into an LLC or a corporation, you're giving away your money because they damn sure going to tax you and send you that 1099K at 2023. All right. So they're monitoring your transactions now. Because they, at 2023, we're going to see how this is going to work. So everybody asking questions on what they're going to report, we don't know yet. We're going to see in 2023. But they're watching you now. So if you have more than $600 come out through January and you don't have a good month, you will see that on your 1099K. So that's why we need to turn these side hustles into LLCs because we need to make sure when the IRS is auditing our tax forms, which we hope they don't, we want them to see that we're a legitimate business with an EIN number, not no side hustle. Because side hustles is what start red flags. They don't care about no girl doing hair in the kitchen. She better have um, Nene's uh, House of Something LLC. Start looking more professional. They'll take you serious. Get them red flags away from you because y'all don't need to be out of it. That's more money. Because they're going to charge you interest. Um... Yeah, they grow, but you they don't claim the grown ones. They don't give you no money. It says, I'm reaching out because every tax person want two deductions and not credit. Yeah, of course they won't. Well, that's because not everything, because some credits you may not apply, uh, qualify for. As a single person with kids, the only credits you really can get would be the lifetime learning American opportunity or the earned income tax. You don't really get no large refund unless you have a business. My job is remote. Can I write that off? Not if you're a W-2 employee. If you're a W-2 employee, you cannot. But what you can be is a consultant um, for people that do at-home work. And then now you have a business, sir or ma'am. Okay? But don't write off no W-2. That's a red flag. If you're, you got a job that's paying you W-2, you do not need to have any work expenses unless you actually have your own business. Okay? Because you can't write off that. What is it called that you do? You know what? It's crazy. I don't know. I just call myself the fixer. I'm a very good strategist. I don't know. I really can't tell you. I do a lot. I have a business called Diversified Services of Florida. We do taxes, bankruptcy preparations. We do um, legal work. So we do divorces for people, um, some child custody um, stuff for people. I do credit repair and um, I'm an educator. So Child, I'm just bored. That's my job. Bored.com. So I do a lot of a lot. So do an LLC. You absolutely need to do an LLC. I don't recommend you become a corporation because if you do an LLC, you can file your LLC on your taxes with your personal income from your job. A corporation, you cannot. I just now praying that I get approved for this student loan to be taken away. I pray for you too, Galaxy Blue. Okay, we're gonna wish we're gonna put our good vibes and good energy, and the Holy Spirit will be able to take care of that loan and wipe it off, okay? Out of the Kyber system and off your credit report so that you can go forth and do great things. All right. What's the difference between the two bankruptcies? Well, there's actually four, but the only types that are um related to individuals are chapter seven and chapter thirteen. A chapter seven is called the, um, is a, a liquidation bankruptcy is basically where you just wiping out all of your debt and starting over fresh completely. Um, you can be married and do it and file separate. Um, you can have a house and do it. Um, but generally it is based off of your income. If you make more than the median income of your area, uh, if you make more, then you would probably be moved to a chapter 13. Chapter 17 is the easiest one. No, no, no questions asked. Wipe it out. Chapter 13, a little bit more um, trivial. OK, um, but it's a you have assets. That's just why it's an asset based on bankruptcy. They look at what you have. Um, in some cases, if the bank, if the trustee feels that you need to get rid of or sell some things, then they will. Most cases that doesn't happen on an average case, unless you're a really uh, wealthy person. Um, but, uh, in the differences on the 13, you would pay your creditors back, but it would only be the creditors that put in a claim. So say you have 20 creditors that you put on your bankruptcy, um, that you want to, you know, get on a payment arrangement with. But only 15 of them reply because the other five said, forget it. Then you would only have to make payments to those 15 because they put in a claim. 
Um, they get very, very minimal. So your payment may be $3,000 a month, for example. But out of that $3,000, they pay your car, your mortgage, and your bills. You know what's so great about Chapter 13 bankruptcy is you can be late and it don't even go on your credit, okay? So I try to find the bright side in it, but it sucks that somebody else has to pay your bills for you, but who cares? You pay the trustee $7.95 on top of whatever your payment is and they pay everybody. So if you're late, you're late, but they can't put it on your credit. And um, you are protected, especially right now during all the, this COVID. They can't take your house if you do bankruptcy. Um, what else? You can file up and you can wait up to the last day of that your house is going to go on the chopping block for foreclosure and file bankruptcy and it stops it. So it's some good things about bankruptcy, believe it or not. Um, and they come off your credit. I want to talk to you about the Navian video you did. I need to remove mine. Okay, Miss DC Joy, hit that link in the bio. We can talk about whichever one because I got a couple of them because Nav they got a bunch of ways to get these going. Did I miss the Navian? How to get it removed? If you want to get the Navian removed, you just dispute. Um, I have a dis uh, dispute form if you guys want to get it. Um, I sell it, okay? But you can keep this dispute form and use it over and over and over and over, okay? But basically, it is saying that it's inaccurate information. All you would put is the Fed loan or Navient loan or whatever you have on there and send it into the credit bureau with a copy of your driver's license and social security card. And please stop disputing this stuff online on Credit Karma. Y'all cannot dispute online, okay? I know y'all might not know this, but let me tell you. Y'all know I'm always telling stuff. If you dispute stuff online and it comes back verified, you, in the sway small print that you didn't read, you lose the ability to dispute again. So if you go to dispute again, it'll automatically come back verified because you didn't read it the first time that it said if it comes back verified, you can't dispute online anymore. So there's no sense of disputing online. Always dispute in writing. Always. Never online. Okay. Never, never, never. Um, it says it allowed me to apply for the bars offense this morning. Congratulations, Tammy Barnes. I hope you get it, girl. Woo. That's right. Go apply. Y'all better go do it. Does it show on your credit that you did bankruptcy? Yes, it will. It does show on your credit. Some people don't like that. And some people don't care. I think it depends on your goal. If you're an individual, you have a house in your car, you shouldn't give a damn if it says bankruptcy on your credit because you already have the biggest, largest purchase you're going to make, which is your home. Doesn't mean that you can't get another one, but um, you already made your big purchase. But if you're an individual, I have girls who um, file bankruptcy and then they try to go get an apartment once it's over. And sometimes the, the places they go don't like it. That sometimes can happen. That is a reality, but that doesn't mean that... Um, it stops you from everything. As a matter of fact, as soon as you come out of a bankruptcy, a chapter seven, because it is only six months. Do you know how many people go right back into getting credit card? Matter of fact, do you know four months into your bankruptcy, you already going to start getting credit card offers? They don't play. They do not wait. You know why? Because there's a list that goes out when you file and there's a list that goes out when you're getting ready to get off. And they're going to start sending you credit card applications like crazy, just like they didn't see the bankruptcy on your credit. And you know what's going to happen? They're going to give you credit. Now, you may start with um, secured cards. Who cares? It's still credit. Get secured card maybe three months. By the sixth month, you'll be right back into your Capital Ones, Credit Ones, um, Navy Federal, all of those. You'll be right back. I've seen it happen. I even have people that go get a car on their first day out of bankruptcy because their credit is clean. Why wouldn't you? You got two years to wait before you can get a house. Go get a car so you can start getting used to that payment so you can get ready for your house payment. So, yes, it does show. What's the quickest way to get points? Depends on your credit. If you have a credit that has nothing on it, we just need to do, um, we could just add a trade line. But if you have your credit score is low because you just got some collections on there recently, we might need to remove those because no matter what you do, they're still going to weigh that score down. So again, do my credit consultation. It's worth it. Okay. Bring you a pen and a piece of paper because I'm going to give you a plan, but you're going to get out of debt. Okay. Some of y'all might need to do bankruptcy. Some of y'all might need to pay. Some of y'all might just need to dispute, but we're not going to know until we talk. Navient just sold my loans to somebody else. Don't matter. You could still wipe them out. Where can you pull your credit? You can go right on Credit Karma. It's free. Where do I check to see if my school is under the Navient? Give me the name of the school. It's Lola. I'll tell you. I still got the list. Um, but you can watch my video too. Or, yeah, send me the name. I'll tell you. 
Um, what's a CPN? Fake ass social security number. That's the best way to say it. A CPN is a made up social security number. Why do closed accounts lower the credit score? Because it's no part, it's no longer a part of the family. Okay, I'm gonna look at it like this. We is all in the family. This is the bad, this is the uh, this is that car, the car you're about to pay off, right? When you pay the car off, what happens? It subtracts, doesn't it? So then that's why your score goes down. Believe it or not, visually, that is how it works. If something's been on your credit for a long time and then it goes away, it subtracts. That's why it lowers your score because it's no longer part of the family. The longer something sits on your credit, the more it becomes like family. And once it, go once it goes away, it affects the family in a negative way. Okay? Sounds stupid and backwards, but that's exactly how it is. My credit consultant is $20, okay? Cheaper than um cheaper than a Netflix and chill, okay? I never had a credit card right now. It's clean and I just got a secure Capital One credit card. Good. Don't spend more than 30%. Um, percent. So if you got a $300 card, don't charge more than $90 at one time. Never pay your balance off to zero. I hate that people tell y'all to do that. That is the worst advice. Pay it down to a dollar, not a zero. Because if it's zero, what is there, what are they going to report? Nothing. So don't pay it to zero. Okay? No more than $90 if you got a $300 limit. Okay? Always keep it at 30%. But congratulations on getting your credit card. The smarter you are with it, the longer you'll go. Always keep it at 30% and you'll see. They're going to start giving you an increase because they want to tempt you to use more. If you use a little bit of your credit, they think you don't need them. So then they throw more at you. But if you use a lot of it, they'll throw some at you. But then they'll slowly start reducing your balance for any little thing that you do wrong. So always use less because less is more in the credit card world. FAMU is not on that list at all. Sanford Brown, Sanford Brown, Sanford Brown. Sanford Brown's on the list. Where, when you went to college, what did you go for? <laughs> I went to college, I wanted to be um, an HR. I wanted to, I have always wanted to work in HR and I never got the opportunity to. So I went and got my master, uh, my um, bachelor's, excuse me, my bachelor's in business, minor in human resource. Then I got a master's in business and then I went back and got another master's in public administration and um, seven classes from a doctorate. But I decided not to do it because I don't need no more degrees. So finger hut is not bad. Finger hut is very good to have because finger hut works with MetaBank and MetaBank is has a business credit card now. So finger hut and Gettington are sister and brother accounts. So if you get one, you should be able to get the other. You just don't use more than 30%. And then if you have a business, you can apply for their business credit card because MetaBank has one now. So um, Finger Hut is good. Concord Career College is on the list. Westwood, yes. University, Phoenix, yes. Strayer, no. You're welcome. Teenager, what credit card? I don't, if you want to get your teenager a credit card, they need to be an authorized user on your credit card. Why? Because it trains you and that child to be responsible because you don't want them to mess up your credit and you don't want to mess up their credit. So this is a way you can hold both of each other accountable. So I say, if you're going to get your kids credit cards, get them an authorized user um, and give them a limit that they cannot go over. Uh, and um, you show them how to check that balance. Show them how to check the, the um, how to read that, that credit um, statement when it comes in. But yeah, authorized user room. Kids can start building credit at 13. It's a whole lot of youngins running the streets that could be running around here with seven, 800 credit score. And you know what? Those people who make those CPNs, they use those, your kids information. They, they can make up the numbers too, but they can use your kids information. Now I'm just saying. Y'all got a whole bunch of uh, people in y'all household that y'all could build and y'all can have a, a big, strong credit foundation in your family, but y'all ain't building y'all kids credit. Because what happens if one day your credit get messed up? You can be an authorized user on your child's credit card and your child can help you rebuild your credit. That's what the family does. Mama, authorized user. And then when she gets her own credit card, she's going to authorize user with me. That's what we do. We go back and forth with each other. 
So your kid's 13, they need to be on a credit card. 16, they need to get their first credit report. You can. That's when they can view it. 18, that's when they can apply for credit. Now, ain't that crazy? They can start building credit at 13. They can pull a credit report at 16, but they can't apply for credit until 18. Y'all don't see the games they playing? That's why y'all got to play these games too. Okay? So kids should have credit cards. Well, be on the authorized user, but kids should start having credit being built. Definitely. The site for the student loan, um, NavientSettlement.com. I'm glad you did that, DC Joy. That's the smart way to be. I'm telling you, other people do it, if you know what I mean. Uh, gift cards. Absolute, man, gift cards. Y'all, I'm going to tell y'all this, and I'm going to go, because I said I was going to go at 10. Have I heard of Drake College of Business? Yes, I have. I attended it back in 2009. They are Drake College of Business is on the list, Miss Ashley Cheek. You should be applying for it. Um, will this be live be available when it's over? Yeah, you know what? If you tell me how to make it, how to do it, I can send you the live. But I'll also be back on here Mondays. I'm telling you, you got to watch me with a pen and piece of paper. People know when you call me for a consultation, that has something to write with. Because the mouth just go, as y'all can see. Um, Let's see. All right, and then I'm going to talk about these gift cards, and then I'm going to let y'all go. So, I'm going to put y'all on a little game. Which I may have not known. So y'all probably saying, well, why do people get CPNs? Why do people use them? I'm going to tell you what people do. People get CPNs or the made up social security cards, or you can even do this with your own cards. They go and they'll get accounts at places like Home Depot or Lowe's or even gas cards if you have gas cards. And then what they do is they go back in the store with the car, the store car, and they purchase Visa Vanilla gift cards. The Visa Vanilla gift cards have no name. They usually go from zero to 500. And what you can do is go in the store and you can buy your whole credit limit in gift cards. And that's how you turn credit into cash. Now I said what I said and I'm about to go. Okay. So if you haven't followed me yet, please follow me. You see, I'll be coming with the game Monday, 7 PM Eastern time. I got so much info to go over with y'all. I know we talked a lot today. Um, but this is what the, your girl does. Okay. So if I intrigue you and you stay with me this long, I really do appreciate it. I hope y'all have a wonderful blessed Saturday and I ain't working. So if y'all book an appointment and happen, hit your girl up today, we could talk today. And, um, so yeah, get y'all some gift cards. Okay. If y'all got gas cards, go on inside of Wawa and go on and get you some money and, um, pay your bills and catch up on a couple things. That is what people do. And if you want to know how you get that money in your account, you just need to sign up with Square and then take that gift card, because I'm about to roll the weed. Take that gift card, swipe it on your Square account, and then do instant deposit. So now all of that, so now your credit limit that you just had on the credit card is now in your bank account. Okay? And that's all I'm going to say about that. So y'all have a good one. Mm -hmm. See y'all Monday at 7 p.m. If y'all need anything, hit me up. I'm, I'm about to go check Instagram now because I know a lot of y'all don't um, message me. All right? Shamika says on all platforms, okay? Like, share, follow, and if you want to copy this video, help me figure out how to download it, and I will send it to you. All right, y'all? Bye!